So we are the last line of defense. And that brings us to the next, the next clip here in Chris Hedges. We are the last line of defense to make the hope possible rather than despair inevitable. All who resist, all who are here today, keep hope alive. All who succumb to fear, despair, and apathy become an enemy of hope. They become, in their passivity, agents of injustice. If the enemies of hope are finally victorious in this nation, the poison of violence will become not only the language of power, but the language of opposition. And those who resist here today with nonviolence are the last thin line of defense between a civil society and its disintegration. <laughs> I love that. Um, the, uh, the comments... The last thin line. <laughs> the comments in the chat room right now, RadioOrNot.com, where you should be chatting for free. Uh, and, and you can watch the program there as well. Bradley Manning got 35 years. How much time do you expect to do with a wink, you know? Uh, <laughs> right? Um, I mean, even even to the extent, I mean, uh, the, the first story that comes to mind is, is uh, the story of Jesus. Whether or not you believe in Jesus the Christ, you can just argue Jesus the man. I mean, he basically went around and said, yeah, pick up your cross and come follow me. Give up all your possessions, come follow me. And what that meant well, that's the cool thing was about the resist, resist until death <laughs> was essentially what he was saying. You're going to be following me until we're killed for, you know, defying the the power, the state and power. Um, I, I forget who said it, but they said uh, if, if we do not hang together, we will surely hang alone. Sure. Or be hang Yeah, or be hanged alone. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the bottom line is, is that, you know, you know, that's the whole... First they came for so and so, and I said nothing because I was not them. And then finally they came for me, and there was no one up to stand up for me. So, I mean, it's inevitable. That's the natural progression of things. So we can sit there and say these things, and say, "Well, I don't want to be Bradley Manning. I sure as I don't want to sacrifice my life." Uh, but you're not going to have a choice eventually, you know. And you don't want to wait till it gets to that point. Well, I'm not, uh, and, dude. I'm so with you. On the other hand, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Doing any time in jail or prison is more time than I'm willing to donate to. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and absolutely. So, uh, and you don't you don't want the freaking uh, the the CIA or FBI bungling outside your house with with night vision goggles at night and you know spying on you and shit. I mean it's you know it's it's a very it's a very dark picture. But the whole point of, the, of their game is intimidation and fear, uh, and you can't let, you can't succumb to that because then they won. They win. It's over. Uh, and so, and since that's their game, you just give up, up up front. Well, then you're left with nothing, and of course, this is a downward spiral as as we see now. So uh, you don't want to get to the point where it's too late. And at this point, it doesn't seem to quite too late, uh, but it surely will be eventually when it just becomes an overt totalitarian dictatorship. And they say they suspend elections and they invoke martial law, and, and you know you got you got tanks rolling down. You know, your main city streets or whatever, and you got just literally military uniformed officers with M16s on every corner in every city, and you're just like, oh, okay, so this is no longer democracy. Well, too late now. I mean, you know, at that point, you're just, you're really fighting an uphill battle. So, uh, I mean, and, and the, the thing now is, too, is that as much as we want to ridicule Obama or any of these elected officials, they're just puppets, and they sure as hell don't ser serve us, and they never really have. Exactly. Uh, history, bear history bears that out. I mean, it's the whole myth of FDR that, oh, we just select somebody, you know, they'll change. Well, FDR didn't do what he did because he was altruistic. He did what he did because he was scared to death of, of all the, the revolt. He was scared to death of the wobblies, I mean, the CIOs, the, the unionists. I mean, FDR you know. was a one-percenter and came from a one-percenter background. I mean, nothing yeah, about his, him... Nothing about him personally uh, aligned with what eventually he he did politically. No, and, and his legacy is that he saved capitalism. He saved capitalism from the capitalists. He didn't, you know, his New Deal was was a compromise because he, what he did was he said he went he went to all these these titans of industry and said, look, if you if you don't compromise and we don't get some sort of deal done, uh, these unionists and these these communists and socialists and these other radicals are coming down the pipe. And, and, and you're going to be, that's it, you're going to be done. You're going to be a far, in a far worse situation uh, than if we, if we get, capitulate and give them some sort of compromise. And that's what the New Deal was. And so, and so what he did was he saved capitalism by, by reestablishing some sort of guidelines and giving a little bit back to the masses. Now, had he not done that, we might be living in some sort of socialism, uh, you know, Scandinavian socialist 
by now. You never know. I mean, so you can look at it now in terms and think FDR really kind of screwed us <laughs> because because he placated uh, uh, you know all these all these radicals who are, who are actually pushing for real socialism and real com you know real real change from the the so-called democratic oligarchy that we currently have. Uh, and now it's just worse again because everything's cyclical. And 70 years later, since day one, they've been trying to repeal the New Deal, and they're almost completely done with repealing it at this point. Uh, so, and movements. We have to have movements. We have to have people in the streets. We have to be not be afraid. Uh, and, and, and it, you know, martyrdom. I mean, no one wants to be a martyr. I mean, good Lord. You know, but it's it's like the old saying um, in Reza Aslam's book, uh, Zealot, which is, uh, I've only seen interviews with him. I'm not, I'm not going to read it. It's a long book. It's like 500 pages. Uh, but the point the point is is that if you take the religiosity out of or even what do you think of Jesus Christ regardless of, you know take the religion aspect of it and look very in a historical context he was killed for crimes against the state I mean he was he was hung with with criminals and and, and thieves because crucified uh, and, and it, yeah crucified I'm sorry you know, same thing and so um the, the, basically because he was an enemy of the state. The Roman Empire wanted, wanted to make an example of him. Instead of saying, you know, his crime, they always write your crime above above the crucifix, and his was the king of the Jews, which was a, which was a threat. It says, we just we just lopped off the head of your movement, and so don't you dare dare try anything else because uh, this will happen to you. Uh, and of course, you know, that's that's historical. That's not even religious. Not even, you know, regardless of you think he's the son of God or not. Uh, he's a radical. I mean, he was a socialist radical. <laughs> of his time, and, and there's, there's and Martin Luther King can be the same thing except for Martin Luther King. Sure. And, um, exactly. and so, it, and that's what happens. That's what happens to these 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 leaders of, of radical movements is they're they're killed because they are a threat. They're a threat to the status quo. They're a threat to um, to those in power and those with wealth because you're talking about taking away something that they have and redist redist you know redistribution of an egalitarianism. I mean, God, no one wants egalitarianism if you're a multi billionaire. I mean Bill Gates is not gonna give up you know, renounce his wealth and give up eighty ninety percent of his wealth and make everybody else, you know, well off. I mean it's just he'll throw scraps here and there and put his name out and have his name on a building or a library and hey, look at me, I'm great, I'm doing some good. Well bullshit. You've done far more worse than you've done good. It's like the whole George Soros thing. And I've seen there's a good uh, there's a good thing on my, my video blog from uh, Slavo Zizek, where he talks about um, how uh, how charity is just crap because you know it's like with one what they do with the, the criminality and the, the, the damage they do with one hand, uh, they wipe clean with the other hand by giving up some charity for it, you know, which is literally throwing you know small percentage of the damage back and saying oh look we you know we're we're doing good well, based on what all the wealth you accumulated through raping and pillaging, you know so it's really just. Um, I mean, these are all not, they're not very, I mean, I don't even think these things I'm talking about are radical. They're just the common sense morality. And we live in a society that's, that's void of morality. I mean, and it's, and it's the whole notion that money trumps everything and that real wealth is defined by how much material possessions and, and money you accumulate rather than how much good you do in the world, how healthy you live your life, how, how good you're doing for the community if you make the world a better place, uh, you know, helping people. That, that, that's not that's not defined as wealth. Wealth defi is defined as money, which is capitalism. And so capitalism defines our society. It's not even democracy. We live in a capitalist dictatorship. Uh, you know, and we're, and we're, we have owners. They own us. You know, you have this false false choice between plastic or paper, Democrat or Republican. Those aren't choices. You know, it's 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 an illusion. A, a real choice would be, hey, can I get health care for everybody? Can we all agree that the health and well-being of the planet? And the survival of a species is the utmost important thing at this point. No, there's other people that not only they're denying it, but they're denying it for their own own short-term gains to the detriment of the rest of us in civilization as we know it, or even the planet as we know it. So, and that's just such myopic greed uh, that controls us, and we have to break out of this. And the ownership, and God, I can't tell you how tired I am talking to people and, and who blame the victim. You know, this, oh, she shouldn't have worn that dress, that's why she got raped, is, is the same same mentality that is applied to people who are poor, people who are uneducated, people who, who actually do commit crimes because of desperation, uh, and, and just general ignorance. I mean, we hate the ignorant. We hate people who are dumb, and it's like, well, it's not their fault. They're poor, they grew up in a bad community. I mean, their only role models are drug dealers. They don't get an education, and, and it perpetuates through generations. And you end up with people... Who are probably really pretty smart, empirically intelligent people who, you know, succeed at what they're doing in their criminal enterprise because it's what they know and what they've brought up with. It's, and so we don't have, we have this haves and have nots. It's, it's a two class society. And, and the, the lie of the middle class was what placated people enough to think that they could almost, you know, 
reach up to the middle class and that the middle class would, would, would save us all, we could all just be middle class. Well, God, what a lie that was. I mean, the middle class is dead, as we've, lived, we've now learned. And if you if you still think you're middle class, well, <laughs> I'll give you a few years, you know, because you'll be around with the rest of us, you know, scraping for, for what you can get just to maintain your own personal status quo. And so the, the, the realistically, in order to have hope, you have to have self-sacrifice. Uh, and you have to be willing to, to change the things you're doing. You have to be willing to, to be deeply self-critical uh, and, and ask the hard questions. And it's, it's not easy. And if you go on, I'm sorry to go on a, a rant, but I'd like to get back to that quote, the, the, the Chris Hedges' uh, hope speech, because he goes into all this. It's libtards like you that are screwing up our country.